Hello and welcome. It is Miro, not Basie. It is also not Nero. It is an M as in Maleficent. Money. Manny Hoya. <laughs> All the things that I love, right? Today, we are going to allow ourselves for a bit of a break. I feel that the last two videos have been a bit of a, not really a downer, but we have dealt with some plans that did not look good. And I know that sometimes people, people are very divided here. Like some people don't really like to see pretty plants all the time. They want to see something that's ugly. And then if you do too many ugly plant chores, people are like, you're only showing us the ugly plants. And I was really concerned in the past week that everyone is gonna think that all of my plants look ugly, which is not true. It is only like the two or 3% of the plants, okay? And it is absolutely, as always, not my fault. And because I have a lot more, well, not a lot more, but I do have more plant chores that it's, you know, it's dealing with plants that don't look good, especially the ones that are in pawn and some of my favorite plants. I just cannot deal with that today. I shan't be doing it, I refuse. I will leave that hard break for tomorrow. Also, I think it's okay to give ourselves a bit of a break or for me to give you a bit of a break from these difficult topics that we had in the past two videos, which are not really difficult, but you know, in the plant community, you know, planty related difficult topics, but there will be more, there will be more and there will be even more difficult topics. So, <laughs> I hope that you're looking forward to that. This video and today is all about allowing ourselves some grace, allowing ourselves some kindness and just a moment to recharge and take a break from dealing with the hard stuff. Not that the plant chores with ugly plants are, you know, particularly hard. And you know, sometimes this can be a challenge and you may feel like you don't deserve this, but trust me, you do. Also, I don't take my own advice, so. <laughs> Please someone, someone needs to take it because I'm not doing it. But anyways, you know, I just often feel like I don't deserve the break. I push myself to do more chores, more work, more everything. And we, you know, we just can't do this all the time. But I want to tell you that if you struggle with this, same as I, you may want to listen to me talk about the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. If you're sometimes a bit too hard on yourself, if you feel that you don't deserve to take a break, or if you feel that you don't deserve something else in your life, if you're going through a difficult period or perhaps dealing with clinical mental health issues such as depression or anxiety, therapy can help you manage your life in a better way and just show up as the best version of yourself. And I think that is the goal. Right? BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and less intimidating for a lot of people, and their mission is to make therapy more affordable and accessible, which honestly, goals. If you don't have available or good enough options in your area, BetterHelp can make finding a therapist easier because it is online. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start leading healthier and happier lives. You can click on the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash basieplants. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash basieplants. All you need to do is fill out a few questions and in most cases you can be matched with a therapist that is right for you within 48 hours. BetterHelp has a network of over 30,000 professional therapists, so it is easier to find someone who will be suitable for your needs, who can adapt to your lifestyle, to your schedule, or who will be suitable for your preferences, which can be sometimes difficult to find if you, again, live in a remote, secluded area. You can also choose to have your therapy via phone call, via messaging, via video calls, whatever works for you and whatever makes you the most comfortable. Also, sometimes for a variety of reasons, you may not vibe with the therapist that you have been matched with, which happens more frequently than you think, and BetterHelp makes switching to a new therapist easy and free of charge. It is also very easy to do within the app and the settings. There is like a button, you click on it, and it doesn't have to feel like a breakup with your therapist. And I think we do need this option in real life as well. Which I think, is, is that like a blog button, but just nicer? Do we already have it and I don't know it? Okay, let's move on. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Once again, the link is in the description, but you can also visit betterhelp.com slash basieplants. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash basieplants. Clicking that link, you help support me and my channel, but also it is good for you because I got you a 10% off of your first month of BetterHelp, so you can check out and see if online therapy is right for you. Thank you, BetterHelp, for being a longtime supporter of this channel, and now we can go back to the video. It's not that there, Miro. 
<laughs> As I said, today we are dealing with regulation hotties. What? Which is an expression that you only hear in Mean Girls. Like, have you ever used regulation hottie in real life? I have never heard it before Mean Girls or after. Like, I've never heard it being used. What are you talking about? And a lot of these Hoya are your favorites. We are going to be dealing with Lacunosa cuttings that I have purchased. I think most of these I have purchased in October and you may or may not have seen some of these. I honestly cannot remember because I know that I wanted to show you the plants, but have I? Probably not, probably not, because I want to do a lot of things that I don't end up doing, but that's not the topic of this video. We're going to shift the angle here a little bit because the plants are very small, but cute. They're cute, and not all of them are lacunosas also. And, you know, say goodbye to my face. We can focus on that in some other video. <laughs> Please no, let's not. Let, don't look at me, stop. Shifting the angle, starting with the plant chores, and I don't know if I told you, we're going to be dealing with the ones on the bottom of the Radsta cabinet, and we will rearrange some light. I think we're just gonna switch some lights around so they get higher light on the bottom, but I will get to that and, you know, we could just start working. Work. We are looking at the Radsta cabinet here. As you know, we have the Caudata section with one exception, which is this Hoya Posiflora. And these do need to be watered. So I will actually do that. And this is, like all of these are very pretty. Very, very pretty, as you know. I love them. The Loances is looking really nice. Really slow, but really nice. So I'm quite happy with that. Down here we have my Mathilde that we recently, well, we knocked that over, that we recently propagated or chopped. And so far, you know, she seems to be doing well. Nothing is dying back. So I'm very glad. And these are actually the pots that I hacked. These are, it's like two different cups and I think it looks cute. We're gonna use some of those. We have one of the Valiniana cuttings here that is rooted. So might repot that and just let it grow out. This is a very small one compared to what my plant used to be. So that sucks. And then we definitely do not have begonias. <laughs> I definitely did not buy even more begonias. Um, this one is in bloom. Gorgeous leaves. My friend did say she finds all begonias ugly. And this is begonia variabilis. And then this one did not arrive in such a great shape. This one was a gift, but I'm gonna show you anyways. Um, so this is begonia Maurice, Amy, I, I don't know. But you know, they're okay for now. Now, these are the plants, or part of the plants. I'm really unlucky today. <laughs> these are some of the plants that we will deal with today. This is Huela Kunosa Asami. I do believe this is what they call clone two. This is from my friend Stephanie, Stephanie Rivillo. She is holy mother plant, I think, on Instagram. And I have decided this is one of the prettiest Lacunosas ever. So she does not necessarily need a repot but I will potentially put her in a similar size pot like this or that, um, just so we can make kind of like a nice display of plants. And yeah, she has not grown yet, but this light is very weak. It's only eight watts. So you can see there in the back, I have one more light. It's not turned on, so I will try and hopefully this will not going to be hard because, you know, the cables are of limited length and I did wire those myself, so great job. I will try to lower that one light here and then this will also be kind of a highlight section, even actually more than this because Kodatas don't really typically need so much light. Anyways, to make the long story shorter, these will get more light and then, you know, when I put them like that, there will be enough distance from the light, I don't think they will necessarily burn. So we have that one. This is one clone of Hoya Pusilla, and I will actually write the accession number. I don't know it by heart. This one rotted before. It was a much larger plant. This is the only part I was able to save, but I'm very glad I did. I think this is a very cute clone. 
and once again uh, she does really seem to like a lot of this airy mix so I'm just going to repot her to a normal pot maybe change the mix a little I'm not actually sure but we're gonna look at that but anyways I think she looks cute so we're gonna deal with her and then what else do we have? We have this Hoya Quintiana Lori Lynn, and she's just in pumice, and I think in pumice she will stay because I'm not very good at growing Quintiana in anything else. So maybe just like a slight pot upgrade. The reason why I wanted to use these is so I can hack them to self-watering. So I might do that with these, I'm not sure. We have this Lacunosa. Snow caps select. She has grown okay. Potentially the only one that might not have great roots because this is a no drainage pot. And actually the reason is not that it's a no drainage pot. The reason is because I have not watered this in such a long time and then I water it and I don't water it. But in any case, she's doing okay. This is from, I think Nina from Slovenia. This is one of the Hoyas that my friend Farah sent me, and I might put these on a trellis, I'll think about it. So this is Hoya Species SR 2009 050. It's a Laconosa from Cameron Highland, I have here written. It used to be, the leaves were kind of chubbier and cuter, but they just did not grow like that. And they were in highlight. So, you know, I'm not really showing you the best look of these plants. That one might go on a trellis. And then we have this one from Carolina. You have seen this Laconosa before. She has grown so much. I love her. I love her and I adore her. She is my favorite. Oh my gosh, she's... Oh, sorry, for a moment I thought that was a peduncle. It's not a peduncle. The camera tricked me. She is so cute. I think she's doing well. I might check the roots. I don't see anything happening here. But I think she is doing well. We have another one from Farah, and I do believe these two are the same clones. I initially thought they weren't, but now I think they are. And I can tell you, it seems to me that it does grow better in organic mix, in Coco Pico Perlite. We'll see. But I do think these are the same clones. So this is, I think, Mint Coin, another cute one. I don't really have much to say about this, to be quite honest with you. Oh no. They're stuck. Slightly dehydrated Minutiflora. And that this one had root rot, so I restarted it. I put all of these in that and, you know, I don't love this setup. It's okay. Is that a mealybug? No, I don't think it is, but we will check. But anyways, I think we can just do a little bit of a better setup in a different cup. So I'm gonna do that. Not a big fan of this setup, but I am a big fan of the plant. And I actually did want to restart it for the longest time because I just didn't love the way she looks. I don't think I will keep this one in here. This is also one of the Lokonosis from Fera. And I think this one might be very similar to the one from Cameron Highland. Might keep her here. This is Hoya Lokonosa, I think, giant. And then uh, from a lady from Hungary who uh, is now in UK, from Timea, I actually recorded this as a Hoya haul, but I didn't post it uh, because, you know, I don't know. I have Hoya Havishkiliana. It was rooted on 29th of August. It was a, I think, two note cutting and she did grow. She looks cute. It's out of variegated. Hewish Kiliana. Slightly larger pot because then I can do, I can give her a bit more water. Um, I might, I don't necessarily love these, but sometimes these things happen and they're not indication of pests. Sometimes they are, but that could also be like a watering issue. This happens a lot in some codadas. So, you know, keep an eye on that. I might give them all a treatment anyways. But she's cute. I like her. And then another cute one is another clone of Lacunosa. And I do think this one is actually different uh, from these. And 
you know, it seems to be growing pretty fast. I actually broke off the tip and she just continued growing. So yeah, I have made a mess. <laughs> I have made a mess. And I think the going is we might move out. And eventually I will do the same here, perhaps. And we're not gonna do this today, but this needs to be taken care of, but that's a vlog situation thing, whatever. We're gonna, you know, make this look sexy. That's the goal, that's the goal today. The angle is a bit weird. Hello, I'm here. I did add a couple of Hoyas to the bunch. We have here Hoya Korea Cell Silver, which I think you have seen me unbox in one of the haul videos. This was a gift from my friend Farah. It is absolutely amazing. It's growing really well, and I do think she would benefit from a slightly larger pot, but she definitely qualifies as hot and sexy. And we will repot her. I have been wanting to do that for some time. I'm not really sure if we're gonna repot these. I have, this is another one from Tima, and this is Affinity Amicabilis. It has that longer flower. And I just really wanted to perhaps give her a slightly larger pot. Not too much, but the roots are coming out and I do tend to sometimes underwater this plant. She's growing really well, but I think just slightly, slightly, slightly larger pot. And then we have here Puliana and I do believe she would like more water. This is pure coconut husk. And I think maybe adding something else to the mix in a slightly different pot would be good. Also putting her on a small, small, small cute trellis would be good. This plant, I think, grows near a river, so she might like a little bit more water. And I'm definitely not giving her that. This is dry as a bone that has been dig out <laughs> that is like uh, 200 million years old. That's how dry this is. And it has been watered recently, so... While this was fantastic for rooting, I'm not really sure she really prefers it as a growing option. So, you know, so those are the plants that I added to the bunch, but we'll see how many we do today. I just really want to have an enjoyable repot. I think we will start with this Hoya Lacunosa. My gosh, she's so beautiful. I love small leaved Lacunosas. Not all of them are actually this small. She's so cute, the leaves are so cute, and, you know, the roots are not looking so cute. <laughs> you can see here that mm, could be better. We're gonna fix that, we're gonna unpot her and give her a slightly nicer pot. Now this one, I think I'm just going to grow it in pure pumice. I don't have pumice. Where are my potting mixes? I kid you not, I sat down to do a repotting video without any. Zero potting mixes. Zero. Oh, and actually, before we begin, I just posted this on Instagram. Sorry for the digression, because it's extremely sexy. But this is, again, from Alex. Hoya Daikie from Acha. And I really do doubt the ID. It really does not give Daikie to me. But the reason why I posted this is it made this leaf here, which is half and half, this is like the first time, I don't know if my camera will pick that up. I do have a photo. It's the first time that a Hoya does something here that is unexpected. I never had a leaf go fully silver. I never had anything like this really happen to me. It's pretty exciting. You know, I grow so many Hoyas and these odd things, you know, Hoyas mutating and going full silver when clearly that's not how they are. Um, that doesn't happen here. But it did happen with this one, and it makes me incredibly happy. And then the second one from him, this one I um, sort of didn't love when he sent it to me. It, you know, the, the leaf is a bit odd here. And this is Hoya Marvels. That's the name. But she also made some nice leaves. Like, look at that. It's giving Meredithy. And it's also like Meredithy textured, if that makes sense. But that one is pretty nice. It really needs to be repotted because, you know, when we grab her here, you can see that the pot is stuck, which means that the roots are stuck. So if I pull a bit, I might need to just fill it with water uh, to release the roots. It's stuck. They're stuck. But anyways, these leaves, I think, are very pretty. These new leaves are very pretty. If you will agree with me, 
and I think we can then repot her. Anyways, enough of the chit chat. Hoyla Kunosa, snow caps select. So I have pumice. This is Bims 2 from Equa Genera. Oh my gosh, I think I said in my last video that I'm gonna post the links and I posted none. Crap. <laughs> Okay, I will post in the previous video too. I will update that. Let's see if we can just get her out of this pot. The roots are not amazing. This is probably going to be the worst in terms of roots, but that's fine. This is completely my fault. I do accept the responsibility. Luckily, it seems to be only the fine roots, which also seem to be the most important ones, but we're just gonna put her in the self-watering and she'll do much better. You know, the reason that it didn't do so well is because this pot is fairly small and that means it dries out fast and it just doesn't make it until I water the rest of the plants. Potentially what this lacunosa here would love is slightly smaller pumice. These are quite large. It's larger than the one that I'm using right now. So that's the only, I think, difference that she would pot potentially appreciate. I also do believe I should have potted her a little bit lower so I can take out the pot easier. But hey, let us make some mistakes, right? Because I never do. Now, I think I do kind of want to do this Kentiana Lori Lynn. This plant was so expensive in the past and Honestly, like it definitely lowered in price, but it's not really cheap. This one is also from Stephanie. I don't know why, but Hoyas like Kintiana don't really grow well for me in organic mixes. Potentially in pure coconut husk, this would do well, but I have just inner variegated Kintiana on my wall and it does not get much water, I can tell you that. And she loves it. So, Honestly, if you're over water, I do not recommend. Excellent repotting, Miro. That's exactly how you, it is done. I don't have any more of this large pumice, so I will just use the small one. You know, this way I will not mind. Oh, she's adorable. I don't know, I love these outer variegated hoyas. Let's see, I will repot these these cuties. Now, one of the variegated lacunosas, and you can see definitely how these are different. I don't really know what mix I will use. I think it will be a slight issue if I use pure cocoa peat with perlite, which is no longer pure cocoa peat, Miro. <laughs> Just <laughs> FYI, right? I think I will add a bit of bark in the next part of the video, what we will also do is we will lower that light so these can get slightly more light and because they're small, I think it will be just enough. It's a 16 watt light, the one that I'm going to use. And it's not a particular grow light, it's just a regular light that is from like a hardware store. I think, you know what, I think I will add a little bit of bark just to be on the safe side because this will be self-watering. I'm just gonna mix a little bit in here. So it's a bunch of perlite here. I'm just gonna do two scoops of this and then I think like a handful for starters of bark. And then another handful because why not, right? Let's do one more. We'll see how this does. And these were both an organic mix, so they will be fine. I do let my self-watering pots dry out. I do actually have some that are in cocoa peat and perlite and they're doing fine. But some didn't love it, to be honest with you. So it really depends on the Hoya. Okay. Do we even see what's happening? Okay, well, 
that's how that turned out. I don't even know if this is in focus. So you will excuse me if it's not. And then let's do the other one. I will shower them, by the way, after this, so they will look prettier before we put them in the cabinet, but that's the look for now. I think we're, like, almost done. I am also completely wrong <laughs> that we are almost done. This Hoya Pusella is an unbuffered cocoa husk, so that's the only reason why I'm doing this. So let's get her out. And I think for this one we can just do something similar to the cocoa husk, so something like pure bark. I will not remove all of it. I will just try to remove as much as I can gently, but you know, if a piece is left, I don't think it's going to be a problem. From what I read, unbuffered cocoa husk is not an issue if you are using it mixed with some other things, because then it sort of balances out, but because I'm using it here on its own, it could potentially become an issue not immediately, but over time. We do not want issues over time, nor immediately. <laughs> I don't think she needs to be in a self-watering pot because I did rot her. However, I will use those pots as cover pots, and I think I will put her on a small trellis and see how I like that. So it will go in this. I will just use pure bark for this one. And you know, maybe that will influence her to go to grow slower because I'm not going to be watering that much, but I'm okay with that. If she doesn't grow the fastest, I would just rather her remain small and cute. <laughs> so that's that one. Two more lacunosas. Asami clone two. You know, it's a gorgeous one, but you can't really see it that well. It's oddly potted. I think these are two cuttings in the same pot of mint coin. So let's do those. I did get three cuttings of mint coin, but one of them started to... No, I got four cuttings of mint coin. Oh no. I already see this is going to be a complete mess when I pot them. But one of them didn't really make it. <laughs> That's fine. I, you know, have plenty. It just rotted very quickly, so probably something in the mail. It was quite cold when I ordered those, but I could not stop myself. And that's not something that we are doing this year. This year we are a completely <laughs> changed person. I do not know Miro from 2023. Who is that? Certainly not me. It's honestly so expensive to order this bark. It's not the cheapest and I can only order limited quantities at one point. There isn't bark that is of this quality here and I ordered several batches of bark here from different manufacturers and they have all been infested with gnats. And the last thing I want to do is deal with gnats again. I really have a bone to pick with bark manufacturers. How dare you sell us mixes that are, have not been properly sanitized, you know? I really have a bone to pick with everyone. <laughs> but we're keeping this video positive, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave that for the next video, because I just want today to do enjoyable plant chores. So today I'm going to do this, and then tomorrow I'm going to go back to the pond and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with those plants because again, now I'm realizing I am completely out of bark and I can't get new bark at least until next week. It won't arrive. So that is not amazing, but we are just staying positive, staying positive. And we're not going to get angry about anything. We don't ever get angry on this channel. <laughs> I never complain. What are you talking about? I'm always so positive. I'm going to get all the bark that's falling by the pot. We are in extreme saving mode here. I see the difference between this one. Let me just grab the other one. I will admit I see the difference in the leaves between this, which was sold as 
Kroniana silver, or, you know, the word that we should not be using, and this one. The shape of the leaves is different. We will see what the new leaves will look like, but, you know, it's not a vast difference. And this is the problem. You just have to ask yourself if you are introducing cultivars, why? If the leaf is slightly different, why am I introducing the cultivar, right? That's something you have to ask yourself. Who are we? Oh, we're gonna do Hirschkiliana. So I really didn't like this Hirschkiliana, not this particular one. When I first saw the outer variegated Hirschkiliana come out, I was like, yeah, no, nothing special. I don't think that my opinion changed until it arrived to me. I got it because it was so, so, so cheap. Tima had a really, really good price on her. I was like, you know, let's get it. Maybe we can, you know, grow her out. Honestly, earn some money, sell some cuttings. But now I'm like, I'm never cutting you. You're so gorgeous. I'm never going to cut you. That's where we are at. Okay. I do have cocoa husk that I can buffer. So maybe I will do that. Because honestly, let's just encourage money saving. Like, sure, let's get good mixes for our plants. That's very important, but... Also, let's be wise about money. Okay. She's so cute. Oh my gosh, she is adorable. Every plant in this video is so gorgeous. I'm doing Valiniana. She has been underwatered so many times, this particular one. This is one from Camilla. I'm not even going to tell you how long I have had this plant for because you're going to judge me. It should have been 50 times this size. <laughs> But guess what? Under, or actually I think I did cut from this plant many times before. But anyways, this is what underwatering can do to you. And the reason why I mistreated this plant is because I had a big one that has been growing really, really well. So I never really cared for this, never really watered it. And you know, now I'm like, oh, actually I do need you because my plant turned to crap in pond. <laughs> I value you now. When I have no other options, now I really value you. I think I'm going to put this Affinity Amicabilis in one of these. I'm not going to make it a self-watering pot. And I'm also going to do pretty much similar mix, I think. This mix here that Tima has is a bit more with cocoa peat, it seems, than the other ones. There we go. And because this is a larger pot or cup, she will hold on to more water now. So I don't have to worry so much about underwatering her. Not that I was particularly worried, because if I was, I would water her more. I'm also going to do something different with this because I might want to grow this on a trellis. This plant is in pond, but I don't think she will take the transition that terribly. So I am going to transition this. Let's just get some of that back. Okay. All righty, and we wish her all the best. She's going to look cute on a trellis, I think. And we have two more. I think one of them I will put in these because this plant seems to want a bit more water. I will do my mix with moss, with pumice, and with bark. So we're just gonna start with just a bit of moss here on the bottom, not too much. This is the worst video. I'm going to mix it in this. We don't need much, so. <laughs> I do equal parts here of bark and pumice, which is my handful. <laughs> and then we mix. The plant we will be putting here is this Pueana. We will be gentle in taking her out of the pot. And this is buffered cocoa husk. I'm going to just leave it and not disturb the roots. And then I will just manually, I mean, it's all manual, but like I will just place like these couple of strands of moss around. I could have done self-watering here. Hmm. Let's do it. Why not do it and then 
we can decide if we're going to stay on top of that reservoir filling or maybe we don't need to because this is in the tent. Let's do this again. A bit of mossy moss, a bit of the mix, a bit of the plant. Sounds like a spell. And now say the incantation, grow, grow, grow. Honestly, I probably could have done a bit more moss, so <laughs> it will probably be self-watered. I go through these phases where I'm like, square pots just make sense, you know? Square pots just make sense. And let's do the coriacea. I'm going to do this in pure pumice. I think also the reason why I did this video is because I was just like, people are going to judge me. People are going to unsubscribe from the channel because I have started to show only the plants that are not doing great that I need to work on. But honestly, like, <laughs> It is what it is. Not all the plants are gonna look good. And, you know, I would say the rest of them look great, but every now and then, someone has to be a crappy plant. But this is not the one. These are not it. So, beautiful Korea Sa Silver. Roll those R's, people, roll those R's. <laughs> and I think I will do this as well. Looks like a mess. I think just the sight of this cup because they know it's such thin plastic and it's like, it annoys me. Uh, let's see what has happened with you. The roots seem good. I will just remove a bit of this leka, but not completely. And then the pot that we will put her in is, ah, something's in me. Do we think this is too small? Yes. See, that's the issue. That's too small, but these are too big. I guess I'll go with the small one. I mean, what else can I do? I don't know. Will this look better on a trellis? Yeah, and the point of this pot mirror is self-watering. Once again, how many times will I take out the pot? And this one I think we'll enjoy a bit of self-watering. The last time, the reason why it rotted is because it was in a mix of cocoa, peat, and bark, similar to this, but the cocoa peat really kind of shifted in the pot and made mud pile on the bottom, which we're not a fan of with Hoyas here on this side. I'm definitely not doing a great job potting this one. I don't know, I think I made a bit of a mess here. Thoughts? <laughs> I don't know. Can we put it on a trellis? What do we think? I don't think so. I don't think this will look cute on a trellis. It certainly doesn't look cute yet like this. I think it will eventually look cuter once it grows a bit more. Right now, maybe some part of it can be on a trellis. I will leave it be for now. Okay, that's decision-making with Miro. Always, always, always a painful process. We need to clean this up. We need to water, shower them, whatever. And then I'm going to come back and fix the cabinet. You can kind of see me a little bit better now. I will definitely spill this coffee, so I better move it. We are going to do some trellising here and I have this wire. Now, this is not true copper. This is aluminum that has been painted to look like copper. I think this is called craft wire. If this was actually true copper, it would be so expensive. And we're gonna make some trellises. So what you will need is the wire and some wooden blocks that have holes in them so you can place the ends of the wire. Now, I don't claim to have invented this, obviously not. I saw this on Facebook and it was shown to me by Timea. Timea is a collector from Hungary that lives in UK. And I saw this in her Facebook group and the group is, I think, Hoyas EU slash UK. So I might leave the link down below so people can join from the EU slash UK. And I think I decided to trellis three Hoyas. We're going to make a trellis for this Hoya Coriacea Silver, 
which is leaking. I do not want you to leak. Just hold on. Let me just put that here. So a gorge Hoya that will go into the, or that will get a trellis. Because this one grows in the tent, I will allow a slightly larger trellis. The rest of them will be smaller. So I will measure out a meter of the wire here. I did one smaller trellis. I think I did, I think I actually did a meter for that one too. Can't remember. I think I will do meter 20 for this one, just to have it slightly longer. Or did I do 60 for that one? Well, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Don't follow me. Stop following me. I'm a terrible influence. You actually don't have to measure this. Just make sure that two pieces that you're using are approximately, you know, similar length. I think I'm gonna do here like 90. And these actually don't work. So I'm gonna use these. Honestly, I am interested. I see a lot of people grow Lacunosa on trellis and I have never done that. I always let them hang. But perhaps if I decide that I like the look, which I probably will, and you know why I will? Because this wire also not easy to come by here and quite expensive in my opinion. And that is probably everything is expensive in my opinion. So I will probably like this method and I will have to buy just a bunch of wire. So you cut your two pieces you get a wooden block that has two holes in them and you put the ends. Now make sure that when you do this, you actually do stab yourself a little bit because it just gives your trellis a personal touch. You know, a little bit of blood will just make it unique. I'm so glad that I got that through and I took it out. This is actually a little bit too long, so this will look very awkward. I'm realizing now this is probably not gonna work. This is not gonna work. Oh gosh, I will have to delete this part of the thing. <laughs> because the other one was shorter, it was easier to manipulate. Though I do have a pretty big span. I just actually hit the Hoyas. I have a big span here of the arms. So, you know, who knows, maybe it will work. And I did not cut two identical pieces, which is important because if you don't, you get this and we do not want that. All right, you know what, let's just start. So you take your thing, the wire, that thing, and you will twist it like so. Now, I have never tried this with this length, so one thing to bear in mind, this tends to look ugly in the beginning, but the more you twist, the better it should look. <laughs> And once again, I don't know if that will be the case with this because I've never tried this length. It may work a little bit better with shorter ones, which kind of sad if that's actually the case because that would mean that we are limited with the length of these trellises. But I'm just gonna keep twisting here and hope for good results. <laughs> just keep talking, just keep talking, Miro. Silence all the doubts you have. Okay, it's actually starting to look better. I will have to say that the small one I made does look better than this. Okay, this is not terrible. This is not terrible. My review, try it with shorter ones. You can kind of see that looks neat. On the ends, it does get more twisted, but don't worry about those. Then you get it out. I actually do like to leave these two like so, you can fix the end if you want to. I think it just provides better support. And then of course, you will bend your trellis. See, they're not very tall, but I think it will do. And honestly, I think slightly more challenging probably to put this in pawn, but we'll try. I think in organic mixes, it's easier. Okay, so this is not listening to me. So what we will do, what is the solution? Let's take some of this pawn out. And then put the trellis in there. So that's kind of the depth I want. And then put the pawn back in. See guys, every problem has a solution. Except those that don't. This looks so cute already. 
I'm so sorry, I'm obsessed with these trellises. I think people who have been watching my channel for a longer time do know what this means. You know that I will start to make more of these. Happens every time, happens every time. I find something new, I discover it, I'm like, I love it. Then I make endless videos about that thing is great, and then, you know, two years later I decide it's crap, and I don't like it anymore, and then I make videos how I'm switching from something. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen with Pawn, too. Oh my gosh, this is adorable, I think. I don't think they're prettier trellises than this one. And I'm just going to use my Velcro tape and attach this Hoya, and it looks so sophisticated. Tell me this doesn't look good. Like, come on. Tell me you think this is ugly. It looks like it has been made by a professional. Anyways, let's make some smaller ones. Or the Lacunosas. Where have I left the wire? This is the unopened one. I do have the open one. I swear, half of my plant shores is me looking for something. I don't know, shall we do 60? I'm afraid if I make them too large, too tall, they're not gonna fit, so let's do 60. And then after this, we get to deal with our Mills bow. And by Mills bow, I definitely mean Rodsta. So I think because this one is going to be super short, we can use it for Puliana because that plant is super small. It's not growing very fast. And I heard she kind of is like that in the beginning, so hopefully she does improve. So you will see, it's so much easier with a small one. Why is it not turning out better? I can probably get them to look even nicer than this, but I'm pretty happy with this look. My gosh, this one is going to be so small and so adorable, look at that. That's gonna be so cute. She <laughs> does not need a trellis, but, but honestly, it's even big for her. We're not gonna tie her for the trellis, but it's there. She sees it and I'm gonna put it in the silver one. Oh my gosh. Can I do the red one? It kind of looks better. Adorable. Absolutely adorable. I am a genius. Okay, and let's make two more trellises. Oh. Again, make sure to always stab yourself. Otherwise, it's not very successful trellising. I think the crucial thing might be to get them even. Can I just make trellises for a living? <laughs> no one would buy them. <laughs> They're not that great. They're not that great, Miro. You're deaf. No! I don't think this is supposed to happen. What do you do now? I think we might be done with this one. Can it get back inside? And what are the repercussions? Oh no. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna stop here because I think it's important not to get the wire out. Maybe make a snug hole hole or cut longer wire and then you can kind of bend it at the end. I'm not going to do any of those things. I am I will learn nothing from this. I mean, this is fine also. It just still looks great. We're gonna pick the last favorite of the Lacunosas. I felt like we needed a trellising close-up, but this is not the angle that I envisioned. However, I am going to roll with it. You can't really see much. I'm gonna turn it towards myself so I can see a little bit of what I'm doing. Okay, I think that it doesn't look bad. We just need to get the trellising up. I think it would actually be better if you did leave longer ends. They typically make the trellises more stable. However, this is what we have. So tiny Lacunosa. She's not going to stay tiny, but that is what we have made. I really wish I remembered the name of this plant. It's Hoya Pusilla. If I have been saying Revoluta this entire time, it is absolutely untrue. We shall open another baggie and make one last trellis. And again, these typically actually work pretty well, these ends. So I leave them like that. Maybe I will straighten them up. I feel they give a lot of support here. Now this Hoya, I don't really think she needs a trellis. She's again small and not really a 
Hoya for trellis, but I don't care. This is like dyeing your hair, okay? Is it going to do anything functional except make you look, you know, cool? No. Well, this is the same for Hoyas, putting them on these trellises. I mean, obviously there is a point to trellising, but not these particular Hoyas that I'm doing today. And the trellis is not stable in the pot. Usually these are, but you know, it's the mix. It's very barky, so it's just gonna be wonky. You could drill the pot, melt the pot, and tie the trellis to it, but that is not what I'm going to do today because that looks messy, and I'm just gonna leave it like this. Cute! Love it. All right, so this was a bit of a wild ride. You can't really see that well. My camera can't really get much closer. This is the 16 watt light, and this is what this will look like. So we have plants around me everywhere, and we had a boo-boo, <laughs> spilled a lot of water by accident, so obviously not on purpose. Let's try to get these plants in. My issue here is, or my fear, is that these are not going to fit only in these which is fine. I don't think they can actually fit in these cover pots, which, you know, kind of was my desire to make them look very sexy, like this. Oh, actually it does fit. Oh, that's great. So I think I'm actually going to leave it in this one and the trellis is still moving. I will find a solution eventually for that, but we're just gonna move that to the back. Of course, that is the only one in that color. That is the only one in that gray. The other ones are either black or silver. And I have two plants. So I think I'm just gonna go with two black pots. Now this light does heat up a bit more than the other one. So hopefully, you know, they will still be fine. And then the other one. All right, I think that looks good. Let's take a look at the color palette. We are working with blue, with gray, with some reds and blacks. I don't think I want to do any more blacks. We have the red, we have the light blues, and then we have this color. <laughs> I don't know what that color is. It's like greenish, bluish, baby blue green. We have more blue, some silver ones. Since this lacunosa is in the blue one, we're gonna do another blue one for Another variegated lacunosa. Both are gonna be in blue. We have another variegated lacunosa. Different one, still variegated, so I think same color. I don't know what I'm doing. I think the red one, we can put the outer variegated lacunosa in. Actually, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Do I like silver? Sorta. I do like it. Let's do a bit of a contrast here. I don't like contrast for this. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is terrible. No, I don't like that this one is the only one that sticks out. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, even though this is 16 watts, it's giving low light vibes to me right now, and I don't think that's normal reaction to light, <laughs> Miro. <laughs> so let's see, I think something bigger can go in the back. I'm not a fan that this one doesn't have a trellis, to be honest. I don't know how long she will stay there. Honestly, is, this, is it possible that this is low light? I don't think it's possible that this is low light. I think I'm imagining. Don't we have something else blue? Let's do that. 
Let's do this here. Okay, I'm not loving it. I mean, these will grow and things will look better. Now I cannot put begonias in here because this has gone to what technically should be higher light. I think I'm gonna put this one even more into the corner. Maybe I just need to let go of symmetry. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Well, look at that. We have so much space now. We can put more Hoyas here. I don't know how much you can see. So this is 16 watts, that light. And you can see it's pretty close. You actually cannot see, let me. Okay, you can kind of see it's like not very far. Maybe 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters from top of these spots. So that's not very far. But anyways, this is what the Hoya babies look like. So I put the silver Lacunosa mint coin back there. Three variegated Lacunosas are here next to one another. Variegated Kintiana, Heusch Keliana, Outer Variegated Lacunosa. And then here we have, mm, Snowcap Select, Mathilde with uh, some Silver Splash, and then Williniana. Eventually, I think we will space them out, but probably what will happen, because I have some space here, is I will just jam more plants in there. I might not leave this one here, it's a bit messy. Maybe I can do something here, like in the corner. Wouldn't it be cool if like there was some sort of a net? And then I can kind of let it crawl or trellis on that and then never take it out, and then when it gets mealybug infestation, I have to burn the entire cabinet <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing it. That's that. I ended these plant chores by putting all the plants back on the top level and watering them. They were slightly underwatered, but we took care of that. I do have to tell you that it actually did take longer than I anticipated to fix the lights. I had to actually rewire all the lights. I don't really know why I thought it was going to be easy because I had to remove one entire light and all of these three are wired to one plug. So I just obviously could not leave the light or the cable unconnected with anything. So I had to do a bit of rewiring, but I think it ended up pretty nice. Again, I think when these plants grow on the lower level, it will look even better. But overall, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. And perhaps we will put a couple of more small plants in, perhaps not. It is not the worst thing to have some empty room and to allow for growth. And I think very soon I will also take care of the rut set that is next to this one. So stay tuned for that video. And now I will leave you to enjoy some of the footage of the pretty Hoyas in the Rudsta cabinet and I will see you in the next video. I hope that you enjoyed watching and have a wonderful weekend. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A big shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Betsy Bougie Panda, Brett Noble, Catherine Molina, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela Danuk Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Deli Heredia, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Ethan W, Aaron Keenan, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Jonas Barr, Hjorth Larsen, Jovan Denot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Koo, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kivi Monchi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Step, Lisa Mary, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Harmer, Selena Novosatsky, Maria West, Mars B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Neely Spicer, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plant Druid, Ray Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martin, Stia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Valamut, Zordrama, and Zlokob Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons. Andy H, Angelina Farnan, Brenda Little, Kelon, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Syke, Zara, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brandon Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Couture Helvetica, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chinmuller, and Tracy the Eibiller.